just jumping into it, Denise, uh, we are going to be talking about budget talks, which are happening tomorrow with the town of Gravenhurst. First of all, just want to get sort of a wide look at what this budget looks like this year. What is the uh, proposed increase for this? How will that affect taxes right now? So it, uh, we, we do have to follow budget guidelines. So council passed a budget policy that, that specifies that staff are supposed to come in with a budget uh, roughly at the consumer price index um, as of July of the previous year. And what that number was this year was 5.4. And the top of the guideline for our policy says it's either the CPI trim as of July or double that. So it would be 5.4 up to 10.8. So that was typically what the budget guidelines are um, based on. And the previous council uh, had had a discussion with respect to the, that policy and had actually passed a resolution directing council to, or sorry, directing staff to come back with um, a budget, a proposed budget that was approximately 7%. So uh, it was outside of the guidelines, but it was further direction by council. So uh, staff have been working diligently over uh, the past number of months to review the capital and operating budgets. And uh, what we had come to the conclusion is that uh, meeting that 7% target uh, that council had uh, asked us to do was actually impossible if we were not going to be looking at cutting any levels of service. So, so staff uh, went back, obviously, we, we do a really thorough review of, of costs. We look at uh, previous year's costs. We look at history, uh, approximately five years we'd be looking at. And then we came back with a budget that uh, was certainly above the 7%. It was, it was just over 10, um, but it was still within the, uh, the 10.8. It was still below the top of the CPI trim target number. So uh, we recognized that we didn't meet the directive of council. So we did go back, uh, looked at some different options that council could consider. So we as staff actually don't have the authority just to implement changes that are outside of uh, you know, a regular operational year. So we're, we're bringing the budget back um, and we're also providing recommendations to council on how they could potentially meet that target. Uh, so we do have a few suggestions which talk about uh, utilizing uh, incoming revenue that typically was put into reserves that we, and, and it's an ongoing uh, revenue, so it wouldn't be a one-time cost, that we could actually apply to the levy to help reduce the tax rate, uh, as well as looking at um, trying to alleviate the hit of the COVID relief funding that we received. We, we did receive over the past few years a substantial amount of money for, for COVID relief, and of course that is not coming in this year. So as we try to adjust our budgets, uh, we're, we're obviously coming out of COVID and where we had done cost reductions before because services weren't being provided. We're now looking at bringing those services back or, or at least 100% bringing them back. And now we're having to apply the costs that go with that. So uh, we've come up with a recommendation as well on how to alleviate that reduction in revenue from the province and sort of taking, if you will, the, the pain over a couple of years as opposed to a one-time hit. Uh, and based on even just those couple recommendations, if council so chose to implement that, then it actually would bring the budget in uh, ju just slightly under uh, the 7% target that, that council directed us to, to meet. And Denise, just uh, looking a little deeper here, what, what are the driving factors for the budget this year? Yeah, so, uh, so thanks for the question. So as I'm sure everyone can appreciate, everything has gone up in, in price. You know, whether it's from our utilities or just uh, material cost, everything has escalated. Uh, so I think the big driver of the budget that's being presented is just the inflation. It's, uh, you know, we're all feeling, feeling it in both in our personal lives as well as our professional lives. And uh, the budget that's being presented to council this week is exactly reflecting the, the cost in order to maintain the current levels of service. Uh, so it's it's nothing nothing new. It's nothing fancy. Uh, the, the resources that are required uh, in order to support the current level of services could include material co costs, could include uh, human resource uh, capital that's required to continue with the services. Uh, so there's a variation of of things that are required simply to maintain our existing level of service. And now let's talk about local share. Uh, what has council already agreed to in terms of what is happening with local share? 
So discussions are still ongoing with respect to the municipal contribution to the local share, um, as I'm sure most people are aware and has been identified um, by MAC is that uh, we, we are obligated to contribute toward uh, the hospital and those discussions are ongoing. Uh, decisions haven't been made with respect to the final contribution amount, but what the town of Huntsville is doing just to to recognize that there is going to have to be some kind of financial contribution uh, is we have put in the draft budget uh, $230,000. Uh, that will be applied to the levy. So it will be a, a levied amount. Now it's important to note that the 230,000 uh, for the local share is not included in the, the costing of the, the draft budget. So the percentage that's reflected doesn't include the local share. And, and that's certainly a discussion that our council uh, will have later this week with respect to the budget being proposed for uh, the operational costs and to support the current levels of service, as well as the commitment that council wishes to make with respect to the local share. So really important to note that is something outside of the, the budget that's um, being brought back forward by staff. So the 230,000 is double what we committed to last year. Uh, and again, it is it, it is being proposed that it be funded through the levy. So it's it's a starting point. It's not where we're going to end up. Uh, you know, certainly once council has a discussion, um, then I'm sure that the mayor will be providing additional comments regarding council's commitment. But at this point in time, uh, we're looking at a 230,000 commitment from the levy. And finally, Denise, uh, what are the next steps? Uh, again, with the meeting tomorrow where uh, the budget will be presented to council, what uh, are the procedures now? So once council has the discussion and the review of the budget, then they will have to uh, decide if if what's being proposed, first of all, they'll have to decide if they want to implement the, the options that are being presented by staff in order to reduce the levy impact. Uh, and then once council makes that decision, if they're happy with the information that's been presented, uh, then they will be uh, proposing that the budget be approved at the, the council meeting on February 27th. So um, lots of opportunity for discussion this week. Uh, you know, I, the, the conversations that we have had uh, certainly with, with the mayor and deputy mayor and chair and vice chair of finance is that we as staff absolutely recognize that it is a very difficult time for everyone. Uh, again, both personally and uh, in our professional lives, it's, it's very, very difficult. We're, we're coming out of uh, a time that was unfamiliar to us and we're just all trying to reset and readjust. And the most important thing in order for us to do that is to make sure that we have services in our community that can help our community be, be well and, and healthy as, as we come out of this. So um, the services are extremely important and, and sadly they come at a cost and, and we just, uh, we, we hope that, you know, decisions will be made obviously in the best interest of the community is what council will be considering. Uh, and, and hopefully the, the cost is, is something that um, the community can understand and support in order to have those services. 